Hi, I'm Tim Enriquez with the National Personal Training Institute. The point of today's video is to discuss the movements and the planes and how the two relate to each other with primary emphasis on the planes. When you're learning the planes, you have three primary planes, the sagittal plane, the frontal plane, and the transverse plane. Uh, there's a little trick that you can use to try to figure out which exercises and which movements take place in which plane. The first plane is the sagittal plane, which divides the body straight down the center, dividing it into left and right sections. And with the sagittal plane, the little trick is to put your side against a wall. So place your side up against the wall. Now you will perform the movement in question, and if what is moving on you can stay in contact with the wall, then that exercise is in the sagittal plane. An example of an exercise in the sagittal plane is a bicep curl. So a bicep curl, I'm here. I flex my elbow as I do that exercise, and my forearm is what's moving. It stays in contact with the wall. A bicep curl is in the sagittal plane. A sit-up or a crunch is trunk flexion. That would be sagittal plane. A hyperextension, as we extend up, also sagittal plane. If it's flexion and extension, it's essentially always going to take place in the sagittal plane. But if we try something like a lateral raise, if I'm here and then I try a lateral raise, I'm unable to do it. Or if I start up against the wall and then come down, I do not stay in contact with the wall. So for the sagittal plane, think S for sagittal, S for side. Put your side against the wall, produce the movement. For example, like a uh, V-grip cable row, as I drive back, a cable row is extension at the shoulder, elbow flexion, and it is in the sagittal plane. The second plane is the frontal plane. The frontal plane divides your body into front and back sections. And the little trick for that is to place yourself, put your front or back up against the wall. So for this, I'll stand up against the wall, front or back, I'll use my back since I'm talking to you all. And so now we will do a, do a motion. Let's try a bicep curl again. So with a bicep curl, I will flex my elbow, my forearm is not in contact with the wall. It's not just my body, it's what's moving. Forearm is not in contact with the wall. So a bicep curl is not in the frontal plane because it's flexion. But a lateral raise, I'm here, I raise out to the side, my arm is what's moving, it does stay in contact with the wall. So a lateral raise is in the frontal plane. The hip abdomen adduction is in the frontal plane. A lat pull down, which is adduction at the shoulder, is in the frontal plane. A military press, which is the opposite of a lat pull down, is abduction of the shoulder, and it is also in the frontal plane. Jumping jacks and snow angels are everyday examples of things in the frontal plane. The final plane is a transverse plane. It's only associated with movements that are horizontal. The frontal plane is gonna be ab and adduction. The transverse plane will be associated with horizontal movements. The little trick there isn't quite as great as the wall, but we can use something similar. We will use a tabletop. Think T for table, T for transverse. So you align whatever it is that's moving up against the tabletop and see if it stays in contact with the plane. Let's try the bicep curl again. So I'm here, so far so good, but as I curl, my forearm comes off the table. It is not does not stay in contact with the tabletop, it is not in the transverse plane. But if I try something a little more familiar, like a fly, so if I'm here and I produce a fly and come in and then back out, the fly, my arms are moving and they stay in contact with the table. A fly is horizontal adduction and it is in the transverse plane. A wide grip row, start here and pull back. This would be horizontal abduction of the shoulder, and it is in the transverse plane. A bench press, a push-up, all of those exercises would be in the transverse plane. For your legs, you could do the same thing, but now think of those hip ab and adduction machines. If I was to sit here and rotate my leg out to the side, horizontal abduction, rotate it in, horizontal adduction, this is in the transverse plane. So the hip and the shoulder be the main joints that are capable of operating in the transverse plane.